Hello everybody and welcome to Unit 2 Biology Area Study 2. Today we are looking at adaptations and diversity. We'll be looking at the importance of having diversity in a population. We'll be looking at adaptations. We'll be looking at interdependence between species and we'll be looking at the contribution of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's knowledge and perspectives in understanding adaptations um, within Australian ecosystems. So we'll start off by looking at genetic diversity. Now we know that genetic diversity of a population refers to the amount of variation that exists between individuals. So looking at differences um, within the gene pool, which is the sum of all of the different genes and alleles that are present in a population. We know that a population refers to a group of individuals of the same species that live in the same area and that gene pool is the total number of individual alleles within that particular population. So in terms of genetic diversity, it is important in protecting the longevity of a species and guarding against disadvantageous environmental changes, things like disease and predators. And so a larger gene pool and greater variation is going to allow for more resilience to environmental change. And so if there's more alleles, it means that we know we're more likely to have alleles in that population that are better adapted to survive um, any new changes that may occur. And so they are able to pass on those favourable traits. In terms of um, adaptations, we know that adaptations relate to animals being best suited to their environment and those animals that are best suited, they're the ones that are going to survive. And so looking at adaptations, we can split them into three major categories. So that is structural, physiological and behavioural. So a structural adaptation basically refers to things like ears, eyesight, limb structure, things that are a lot more physical in nature. Um, physiological refers to, I like to think of it as the internal running of things. So stuff like blood flow, water input, production of poisons and toxins. And behavioural adaptations would be how we respond to our stimuli. So things like evading extreme conditions, moving into a cooler environment, whatever it may be. Um, in terms of animals, um, it's important that we undergo some temperature balance and water balance in order to survive. And so some structural adaptations that might allow for that are things like insulation and surface area to volume ratios capillary channels in the skin. Physiological things would be things like if you're endodermic, endothermic versus ectothermic. Um, for different animals, the heat release, um, evaporative cooling, so things like sweating and panting, um, the excretion of concentrated urine, low water content feces, um, and the reliance on metabolically produced water as well. Looking at behavioural adaptations, we've got things like nocturnal behaviours, um, endurance versus evaders, um, evaporative cooling and burrowing, or things like nocturnal behaviour and endurers versus evaders again. For plants, um, looking at the structural and physiological adaptations, we have things like light coloured on or reflection on leaves, um, leaves of low surface area, vertically hanging leaves, regeneration after a fire perhaps, um, deep root systems, water storage mechanisms, sunken stomata, um, rolled and folded leaves and guard cells and the regulation of stomata as well. So these are some examples of things that can enable life to exist in a wide range of environments. In terms of looking at tolerance, Every organism will have an optimum range in which they thrive. Just outside of that optimal range is going to be what we call the zone of physiological stress. So an organism will survive, but they will undergo a little bit of stress and have to overcome some factors. And then we have what we call the zone of intolerance. So if the environmental conditions say temperature is too high or too low, then unfortunately that organism will not stay alive. Moving on to survival through interdependencies between species, this is basically looking at the interaction between species. So we know that in terms of the order of, I guess, growth, we have a large ecosystem 
ecosystems are made up of communities. Communities are made up of differing populations. Populations are made up of organisms and organisms are made up of cells. So we need to know um, what each of these are and how they might relate. So a single cell is, um, you know, determining the processes that occur within an organism to help maintain its survival. We've then got the organism itself, so that living thing. It could be the plant, the animal, the single-celled form of life, um, if it's a unicellular organism. We then have our population, which is a group of those organisms of the same species living in the same area. And then a community, which is a group of populations that would interact with one another um, in the same area. And then an ecosystem is multiple communities interacting with one another. And so an ecosystem can be made up of biotic and abiotic factors, so living and non-living factors, and contain many individuals and population interactions and um, lots, lots happening there. In terms of interactions between species, we need to understand symbiosis, which is the interaction between two organisms of different species living in close proximity to each other. So they might have a symbiotic relationship. Um, mutualism is the interaction between two organisms of different species where both experience some level of benefit from each other. We've got commensalism, where two organisms of different species, where one gains some sort of benefit while the other experiences no benefit but no harm either. And then predation, of course, is an interaction where one organism hunts the other for food. You might also come across the word keystone species, which is basically a species whose effects on an ecosystem are greater than expected relative to its population size as well where the population size is the number of individuals that are in that population. Density refers to the number of individuals in an area um, as well. And distribution is based on the range of geographical areas that members of a population can be found in. And the way that they can be distributed, they can be uniformly distributed, they can be completely random, or they can be clumped into specific groups. And finally, looking into Australian ecosystems. So Indigenous Australians' knowledge of the Australian ecosystem has enabled them to survive in really harsh landscapes for the last 60,000 years, and the extent of their understanding of those ecosystems can be seen in the cultural management, say things like fire and their utilisation of interspecies relationships. So knowing about country, um, which is an area that is traditionally owned and looked after by an Aboriginal language group or community, or by certain people within a group, and it might indicate more than just that area. It's also a concept that can encompass spiritual meaning and feelings and connection with that land. Um, you may have heard of some Dreamtime stories, so the set of stories and beliefs um, that might pertain to the world and its creation. And Indigenous Australian cultures have a rich understanding of the Australian ecosystem, which has allowed us to utilise the adaptations and interdependent it's between species that exist in Australia to ensure not only their survival but also the flourishing of the native ecosystem. So Indigenous knowledge of our ecosystems can be used in conjunction with sort of Western specific approaches to help us solve a number of important problems. So how we can manage in catastrophic um, bushfires and events occurring due to climate change as well. We can also go over a little bit here where we think about um, different use of different things. So we've got food, medicine, fire, and increase in distribution and the method that um, has been pertained and how we've also done some of these things as well. If you do have any questions, again, this is just a summary. Hopefully in class you've gone through it in a lot more detail, but this is just to remind you some of the key vocab. If you do have any questions or anything you would like to clarify, please leave it in the comments below and I'm happy to go through that as well when I get to it. All right, have a great day. Thank you. Bye.